So WWDC 2023 has just concluded and this is exciting and amazing news. For once, if you have an Apple device like an Apple Watch or an iPhone, even a MacBook, whatever Apple device you have, you now have the ability to test out the latest software that Apple has to offer before they come out officially to the general public later on in the year. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can safely upgrade your device to iOS 17 and some of the safety steps that you need to follow in order to make sure that this process goes as seamless and as safe as possible. So the first thing I would like to highly encourage you to do if you're going to be installing iOS 17 on your iPhone is to not install this update on your main device, the iPhone that you rely on every day. If you have a backup device, then you could try out the beta on, a, on another device because the first betas of iOS 17 are most likely going to have bugs and issues. So that is the first thing that I encourage you to do. And the second thing that I encourage you to do on your device is to remove any previous profiles that might still be on your device. So the way we are going to do this is to go into the settings app and then go to general and go down to where it says VPN and device management. Now, for me, you can see it's all clear, but if you have a profile that's perhaps like iOS 15 or iOS 16, then go ahead and delete and remove that profile. And then after you remove the profile, go ahead and restart your device afresh so that you know you give iOS 17 a fresh new start without any other profile that might disrupt the update. Another thing that I highly encourage you to do if you're going to be updating your device is to actually back up your device. Now, there are various ways that you can back up your iPhone that you want to put on iOS 17. And the easiest and safest method is to back up using iCloud. So if you go into your settings and go to your iCloud profile and click where it says iCloud right there, you'll be able to see you have your iCloud backups. And if you click there, you can see where or how your devices are being backed up. And if you click or enable your back iCloud backup, you can see I'm just turning on my iCloud backup. And this way, my data will be backed up in case if anything goes wrong as I update or test out iOS 17 betas, I'll be able to recover the data that is on this iPhone using iCloud Restore. Now that this feature is turned on, you can let it do its thing automatically. Or if you want, you can actually back up your device right now by clicking there and then giving your time, your device some time to be able to back up. Now, there is another backup way that you can do, and that is using Finder on the MacBook or using iTunes on Windows. And the, for that, you actually need an, a connector to physically connect your iPhone to your Mac, and then you need to launch Finder or iTunes on Windows and proceed to back up your device so that in case if anything happens to your device, you can restore the data that was on your device previously. Now, the last thing that I highly encourage you to do if you're going to be updating your device to iOS 17 is to basically make sure it's charged up to 100% or to a reasonable level or what's even better than that is to make sure that it's connected to a power source like I just did right here. And then that way you don't have to worry about your device shutting down while it's installing a beta update, which could be dangerous and result in your device being stuck in a boot loop or result in data losses. So with those major safety steps out of the way, this is how we are going to be updating to iOS 17 in 2023. There has been changes from the previous years. So follow along. It's very easy and very simple to do. The first way that we can update is by means of a developer account. And using a developer account has an advantage because from the moment WWDC 2023 concludes, then a few minutes after the first developer beta one of iOS 17 will be available and to register or enroll your device and Apple ID, this is what you can do. So it can be done on the web, but this is an easier way that you can follow. So go to your app, Apple store or app store right there and then search for the Apple developer application or just search for developer and you see this developer app 
click open once it's downloaded or if you already have it this is how it's going to look on your device so once you have this application open it you can see it's already talking about wwdc but go to where it says account right there and once you go where it says account you can see you can sign in so click sign in and i'll sign in with my apple id and you can see basically how my account looks and if i click my name here where it says ben manzi you can see this is the status of my developer account you can see it's valid and one thing that you do need to know about the developer account is that it's paid so there is a fee of about 100 us dollars per year or 130 canadian dollars per year to keep your developer account valid throughout the year so this is the first thing that you do once you've done this you can now go into your device and go to where it says settings and go to where it says general and go to where it says software update right there and if you click on beta updates you can see you now have the ability to select the developer beta and now you can update your device to ios 17 beta 1 when it comes out officially so that is how you do it using the developer account there is a cheaper or well, a free method that you can do and that is enrolling your device into the public beta or you enrolling your apple id into the public beta testing account with apple and the way you do this is actually pretty simple on your device you want to go to this website beta.apple.com and once you've reached this website you want to click where it says sign up if you don't have an account or sign in if you already have an account so i do already have an account i'll just sign in and you can see i'll sign in with my apple id that's existing right there and once it's signed in you can see it tells us all about the different softwares like ipad os mac os tv os we want to select ios and if we go down you can see it says enroll your device and if we click where it says enroll our device you can see we are encouraged to back up our devices or basically for the, the three safety methods that are highlighted at the start of this video and basically you can see to configure beta updates on your device if you are running ios 16.4 or newer this is the method that i will be showing but then for devices running ios 16.3 or later then this is the way that you have to follow i would assume most people are on ios 16.4 since it's the latest public update that's there so once you've basically signed up your or enrolled your device like this you want to go into settings and then go to general and go to where it says software updates and you see where it says beta updates click there and you want to go ahead and select public beta updates or ios 17 public beta updates and that way you'll be able to receive the ios 17 public beta updates when they come out so the public beta update method has a disadvantage in the sense that it won't come out exactly after wwdc concludes so there is a delay for the public beta last year with ios 16 the developer beta one came out on june 6 but the first public beta of ios 16 last year came out on july 11th so there is about a month and a week delay for the public beta testers so that is the disadvantage of using the free method of downloading ios 17 but either way you are free to always shoot me any questions that you have and try out the two methods that i just highlighted and other than that do subscribe and follow along i'll be covering ios 17 watch os 10 and mac os 14 here on the channel so stick around and we'll walk the journey together peace